Now, seven marathons in seven days. That was the gruelling challenge taken on by Kevin Sinfield last year to help his former Leeds Rhinos teammate, Rob Burrow, who is living with motor neurone disease. So Kevin's amazing act of friendship raised more than £2 million. Now he wants to push himself even further with his latest endeavour. Graham Satchel's got some details. December last year and an extraordinary challenge. Rugby league legend Kevin Sinfield running seven marathons in seven days. This is a sensational try. There are many in Super League that can do that. Why seven? It was the number worn by his teammate and best friend, Rob Burrow. Rob was diagnosed with motor neuron disease in 2019. The run raised millions of pounds for the MND Association, but now there's a new challenge. It was Kev's idea. He wanted something hard, and this seemed hard. This is going to be really challenging. The medical team at Leeds Beckett University checking fitness levels. They'll play a key part in what Kevin has planned next. He's going to run 100 miles in 24 hours, almost four marathons back to back with no sleep. If you think about the seven in seven and, and what an unbelievable achievement that was, but that was four hours on, 20 hours off. He's not going to sleep, so it's going to be tough and there are serious risks. Kev will do it. He'll need the support of everybody, you know, both his support team and everybody in the country to get behind him, but he will absolutely do it. The route takes Kev from the Leicester Tigers Stadium, where he's a coach, through Nottingham, Mansfield and Rotherham to the Leeds Rhinos ground. Tom is a key part of the team. He's plotted the route. If you're running that distance, any hills and elevation is going to, is going to be a problem, really, in that you, you ideally you want it as kind of flat as possible. Um, but obviously, if you're covering such a large part of the country, avoiding all hills is almost impossible. The money Kev has already raised has helped countless families with MND, like Kirsty. <laughs> And if Kev needed any more motivation, listen to this from Rob's family. A hundred miles in one day without no sleep. You are crazy. You know we think you are amazing. Thank you for doing everything you have done for my dad and people with MND. Good luck on your next challenge. When Kevin Sinfield reaches the Leeds Rhinos ground, he will actually have run 101 miles. Fitting for a man who has always gone the extra mile. That report was by Graeme Satchel. We're joined in the studio now by Kevin Sinfield and campaigner Chris Hoskin, who lost six family members to motor neurone disease. Sports scientist Professor Greg White will also be joining us very shortly for a little bit of expert advice. Chris, we're going to come to you in just a second because we've spoken before. I know your story is amazing, but Kevin... <laughs> um, are you mad? How on earth uh, are you going to do this? Um... <sighs> Yeah, really looking forward to it, actually. I think what we did last year was incredible for all of us. And to get another chance to show um, how much we care is really important. And we look to go again. OK, so let's just talk through what the actual challenge is. You're going to leave from your current club, which is Leicester. Yep. And then you're going to run till you get to Leeds. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, um, it's it's. I think since the seven in seven, we've wrapped our brains of what we do next because people got behind it so much and supported it, and uh, we really enjoyed it too. To find something that grips people is tough, um, but it, it made sense. Um, I came across something called Big Dogs Backyard Ultra, which is a race in America. Um, you guys. It was on your site, actually, and, and that inspired me. It's a run that takes place every hour, a certain distance. And um, we said, let's do this 7K and uh, let's do it for 24 hours. And then I switched to Rugby Union. I'm at Leicester Tigers now and work out the distance between Leicester and Leeds. And you get to around that 100-mile mark and you go, well, we'll combine the two. 
Just as well it wasn't further, really, isn't it? <laughs> it is, yeah. Because <laughs> he would have done that, that anyway. a lot worse. Now, I, I know, Kevin, you know this full well. You have affected a lot of people with what you're doing. Rob obviously has. And, and Chris, you have... Uh, we've, we've sort of slightly deliberately kept you two apart this yes. morning because you, you've not met before. Is that, is that right? No. And you have been very much affected because yeah. of your own personal story. Just so people understand, and I know you want to talk to Kevin Sorry. in a moment, do you, would you mind just explaining to us, because we said about the loss in your family. Yes. I th the loss started with my granddad in the 30s, which M&D wasn't around then as such, but he wasted away, so we've always assumed that he died of M&D. In 1991, my dad passed away. In 2005, my youngest son died at the age of 27 with M&D. Then an uncle and a cousin in 13 and 14, and just this January, my one remaining son at the age of 45 died of M&D. So it's kind of, um, it, it's, it's just there with us all the time. Well, I mean, I'll, I'll say, I think on behalf of everyone listening to the story, because I'm so sorry for your loss, because mm -hmm. this has been over a long period of time. Kevin, I mean, I, that, is, that is so shocking. Yeah, it's devastating. And I, and I think for people like Chris, um, to see the devastation that's been caused is, is why we're trying to help, trying to provide a bit of hope. Is there anything you wanted to say to Kevin directly? Yes, I do. I think, Kevin, that you are an amazing person and the things that you're doing stemmed from a friendship between you and Rob. But I don't think you realise the bigger picture of what it does for us. So it does... I also volunteer for the M&D Association and I know that your challenge is going to help us at the Association to look further into research, which is really important because the last time we were on the programme we were talking about the importance of research and the funding that we're trying to get from the government. But beyond that, all oh, those of us who are volunteering at that base level, you give us inspiration. You give us inspiration to try and find different ideas. You give us a, a hope that there may be a future because without hope, I couldn't live like I do. It's impossible. And then when I see you, I think, well, do you know what? I'm going to do what I can. So I do what I can in my little way. Going back to my story, when my dad died in 1991, when I said M&D, very few people knew what I was talking about. Now they do. And that is partly down to people like yourself. And I think from the whole of the M&D family, M&D warriors, M&D patients, M&D association, I want to give you a massive heartfelt thank you. Thank you. Is that going to help you along that 101 mile journey? Definitely. Because it's not actually... This, the important thing to remember about this challenge yeah. is, I know it's meant to be 100 miles, isn't it? But when you actually mapped it out, it's 101. It's 101, yeah. And that's why it's the extra mile. Yeah. Mm. Um, how much help are you going to have along the way? Um, a lot. Uh, the, t the same team as last year, which is brilliant. <laughs> we get, we get everybody back together. And then um, I think because of the restrictions that were in place with COVID last year, mm. it meant it was massively condensed and, and shortened. Hopefully this year people can come out and support and and um, yeah I, th I think what you know people beeping the horns last year people coming out of their houses mm. to see it just it's made great, such a difference it? yeah it made, it made a massive magic. difference. Do you know what I'm really mindful of sitting here with you two and it, I may, it's beautiful what you said I'm, I'm so conscious Kevin you're so much happier talking about <laughs> the running and yeah. the tooting of the horns than you are hearing the tributes. It's a, it's a but. It's real, isn't it? You, you know this. You must, you must have people having these conversations, you know, just routinely all the time, people you've never spoken to. Yeah, it's, the response has been incredible. I, you know, I've been called lots of things since the 7 in 7. A lot of people call me the marathon man now, which is crazy, because <laughs> like, we set out with just trying to do something for a mate. And um, I think when I've read about this challenge and, and what we're attempting, you know, I've read it 16 times harder than a marathon. Mm. We should have. To step up from a marathon to a hundred miler, you should should have six to nine months of training. But the reality is, people who are diagnosed with MND don't always get six to nine months, and and we've just got to go for it. Now, I'm going to talk about something on the telly that we've never spoken about publicly before, and that is day five of the mm. seven in seven. I don't even think you remember this, but we've all seen those pictures of you running your seven marathons in seven days. Day five was a well, it was all a real challenge. Yeah. But on day five, you were not well, were you? You were not in brilliant physical shape. 
your body was starting to react significantly to what you to the challenge. Yeah. Um, I was really worried about you on day five, and I phoned one very special person, that is, our endurance athlete specialist, Dr. Greg White. Morning, Greg, who can join Morning. us now. Do you remember that, Greg, when I got in touch and I said, look, I I, I'm, I'm worried he, he couldn't sleep. What what happened? You kind of like went all like puffy faced and- Yeah, body yeah. started to swell. Your body started to yeah, swell and uh, we were on day. And yeah, and I thought, oh my goodness, we're gonna kill him. Phone Greg, and you take up the story there, Greg. Well, I mean, you, you contacted me and, and I, immediately I knew what it was because it, it's so common on these type of challenges. I mean, what, what you have to imagine is that, that these type of challenges are a massive physical assault on the body. And it's, you know, often we think about all the legs and, and the feet, but imagine what's going on inside the body. Uh, and, and what you get is this this huge inflammatory response. So what, what, what Kevin's just described there, this sort of puffiness, um, where you get puffiness, even places like the hands where you don't expect it. Uh, and of course, what that then also does is a cascade from that, which can often make you feel like you've got the flu. That's often what it feels like. You feel hot and sweaty, particularly at night when you sleep. So really, you know, Kevin's described it beautifully, making sure you've got the right people looking after you to make sure that, that you tackle those type of problems as you go along is absolutely crucial to get to the finish line. What does he need to do for this next challenge then, Greg? work as hard as he possibly can. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, it's a very, very tough challenge. Uh, and the real tough piece is often you look at it, you think, well, you know, seven kilometers in an hour, no problem at all. It's repeating that for 24 hours solid. And, and not only have you got the physical demands, but actually it's the sleep deprivation, which will really start to pay, uh, start to take its toll. So I think the key to it for Kevin is really to make sure that you make the absolute most of those recovery periods in those hours. And they're going to be short. You may only get something like 15 minutes every hour to recover, but it's making sure you optimize those 15 minutes, making sure things like nutrition, hydration, making sure you're getting some as much rest as you possibly can, because obviously there's going to be a lot of people wanting to talk to you at that time. But optimize that recovery and make sure you keep on top of the sleep deprivation because that's the one thing that will really start to hurt as the challenge goes on. Okay, Kev, is that good advice? Good advice, yeah. I can give you some help on the sleep deprivation. Okay. We do that all the time here. <laughs> yeah, thank you. <laughs> but before we let you go, there is someone we haven't really heard from properly this morning. Here is a very special, special message for you from Rob. Well, mate, another crazy challenge is approaching. I would say good luck, but I don't know, you will absolutely smash it. I'd often say I would do the same for you, but these challenges are beyond my means. I know my family will be behind you, and I think the whole country is as well. On behalf of me and all the sufferers out there, thanks from the bottom of our hearts. You are so highly thought of in the land. I know you will smash some sort of record for 100 miles. Good luck, Kev. P.S. I deleted this by accident and have to make this up again. So you better kill it. <laughs> it's true, he did. Uh, I, Chris, I feel in a way almost you get the last word on this one because I, I've, I've watched you kind of smiling all the way through the chat, listening to Kevin, and I suppose some of that's about the point, isn't it? That, you know, you've got to find something to make yeah. you get through things. Yes. People asked me last time I was on here how did I manage to do it without breaking into tears. Um, the reason I do and I can is because I've got John on this shoulder and James on this shoulder saying to me, go, Mum, go, go, Mum, go, and I'm doing it for them and the rest of my family. And I'm close to tears now, but it's, I just, I can't thank you enough, Kevin. Thank it's you. unbelievable what you're doing. Full of respect for you, uh, Kevin. Thank we you. wish you luck, you thank know. You. You're gonna need it. <laughs> I should also say that um, we will be following you every single step of the way. Thank you. And uh, Greg as well, thank you. Yes. Uh, I'm sure we'll catch up again and we'll find out how things are getting on. Thank you all very much. Thank you.